if you sit around and watch your toddler play, you probably have seen your toddler stack some blocks or stack other toys together and make a tower. But what happens when the foundation isn't really well laid? The tower topples. This is just like raising a toddler. There are a few foundational things that we can have in place to help us in the rest of our journey of raising a toddler. A few things that just make it all quite a bit easier. Hi friend, I'm Sarah from the blog My Home, Your Home, Our Home.com and of course this channel. Welcome. Today's video is all about the best advice we have ever received to raise toddlers. We have two of them and this advice has been so helpful for our family. Raising a toddler can be chaotic. It can feel sometimes like you're not making any progress. However, we have found that when we focus on just a few things, it actually get, pays more dividends in the end than focusing just on everything all at once. My husband and I are from different cultures. My husband is Brazilian and I'm American. And so for us as a family in particular, just having these foundational pieces in place helps us to know what we're working on as a family. And I will make a video in the future all about how we navigate this multicultural parenting things. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you see those when they first come out. Tip number one is to teach sign language. When our boys were really small, we taught them some basic signs such as more and please and all done. These signs helped them to communicate which led to a lot less frustration for both them and for us. When we were at the table and they wanted to get down, all they needed to do was say done. Before a toddler can speak or pronounce really clearly or just doesn't have a lot of words yet, these signs become really helpful for building communication between parents and kids and they are super helpful for us even today with our boys. Number two is to keep your kids' toys under control and to teach your toddler to put them away, to clean up after himself. This has been game changing for us. I grew up in a large family with many, many kids and so I know how quickly a mess can accumulate when kids are playing. And I am totally not for stopping kids from playing. However, there are some things that are super simple to implement, require follow-up, but are very easy in their practice and in their methodology that we have found to really help our family to keep toys under control. I have an entire video all about that that I will link in the iCard above and in the description box below so you can go and check that out. The key word here though is to train your child to put away his toys. This doesn't just happen automatically and it requires requires some effort on the part of the parents as well as the child. I do want to just share a little bit about the process of us having our son take care of his own toys. First of all, we taught him what cleanup looks like and means by saying it when we were cleaning up in front of him, helping him with his toys. And something else that we found really helpful was from a book by Gary Ezzo called Toddler Wise and Pre-Toddler Wise. I forget which one exactly it was, but they're both great books. He said that for toddlers, you need to break up a task into smaller steps because they can't think yet sequentially like that in multiple steps. So for us, we say clean up the Legos, clean up the animals, clean up these things if he has gotten out a lot of toys. Tip number three is kind of related to the previous tip. It is to train your toddler to do simple chores. When we do chores throughout our house, we feel like we're contributing to something bigger than us. And I don't know any children who don't enjoy imitating their parents. Little kids love grabbing brooms, grabbing things, typically. And so demonstrating for our kids how to clean up something, how to do something for the whole family, and then allowing them to try it is actually really empowering and really confidence building. My son right now will sweep, not perfectly, but he still does it. He will try to help us clean some fruit help me cook, and I have an entire video all about toddlers and training them to help you cook and just different methods and ideas for getting them in the kitchen. You can also have them clean up their own messes and spills. My son uses a cloth. Whenever he spills something, he just goes, uh-oh, and gets the cloth. There's no crying involved. There's no shouting. It's just, oh, that was a mistake. It was a spill. And some other ideas for simple chores that toddlers can do are taking their own plates to the kitchen, setting the table, putting their own clothes in the laundry hamper. Number four, teach your toddler to give verbal responses. This is one that we love as parents, but I have not been so great about enforcing recently and I need to get back on track with this. When you ask your child for a verbal response, when you give them a command or call their name, it gives a kind of commitment to you as a parent and lets you know that they are listening. 
our kids hear us, but they don't hear us. And this is just one way of rolling that out. And you can teach it from a toddler age. It's so much easier to teach it early on than later, I've heard. Um, I want to work more on this, so this is a goal with us as a family. But when I say my son's name, Steven, he needs to respond, Mom and then show me that he's listening. And I've heard some parents say that they want their kid to actually look at them. Um, I'm not sure if I'll make that a part of this process as well or not, but at least having the verbal response. And then when I give a command, I want my son to say, okay, mom. You could even add on to that some other phrases such as, okay, mom, I will obey, or okay, mom, I hear you. So that there is that accountability there for what they have heard and also to obey, to follow through. Tip number five is to teach your toddler to come to mommy and daddy and don't touch. In those first few years, especially that first year with a toddler, there are so many things that we feel like we have to teach. No, 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 no is constantly heard in our homes. I found that with our boys, if we taught them just these two things, it was so helpful for so many other things. The first was come to mommy or papai, and this brought our children away from something we didn't want them to have, and also kept them safer in public settings or in groups when we went outside of the home. We taught them to respond with obedience and that's a really good foundational building block for later on in life. The other thing that we taught them was the words don't touch. And if you have a toddler anything like mine, you know that touching everything is an important part of their development, sensing things, even putting things in their mouth. However, there are some things we absolutely cannot let them touch, such as electrical outlets, hot pans, things that will harm them and hurt them. And as a mom, I want to teach them that phrase really early on. So just zoning in on these two commands was very helpful at the beginning. They're not everything your toddler is ever going to need. We have definitely taught other commands as well and directions, but um, these were super helpful in the, that first year especially. Number six, designate specific areas for eating. When you have a toddler, they don't have a, the fine motor skills and gross motor skills yet to completely control how food drops or how water is kept in a cup. And so when they spill, it's something that we should expect. So just keeping them from areas where we don't want that kind of thing happening can bring our levels of anger down and also help us to regulate our responses to them um, in beneficial ways. It also helps our home to stay more intact and cleaner. Um, I know for me as a mom, one of my goals is to have a house that is always welcoming and inviting for anyone who happens to stop in. That's just part of our life living internationally. We have unexpected guests like all the time. So um, I have an entire video on how to keep your home clean and ready for guests and that's linked in the iCard above as well. Tip number seven is to have a routine. This is not a schedule, this is not stringent, but a routine gives toddlers the mental, emotional, relational support, even physical support that they crave. Toddlers actually crave routine, they crave something that's predictable because there's so much around them that they are learning about and you can read this in many, many, many studies. But one of the most helpful books I have found for building a routine for my family and for my toddler is Pre-Toddler Wise and it's also repeated throughout the rest of the series, Toddler Wise, Preschool Wise. These are books that are well researched about building a routine for toddlers, the benefits of that, and they also give examples of what that kind of routine might look like. It's a really simple daily rhythm that has room for a lot of flexibility because we can choose what activities are we going to do within these activity times. But at the same time, it gives us a backbone. It helps my boys to know what to expect, what is next. Once they take their bath, they know bedtime. Once we have lunch, they know nap time. And so they know what to expect. It helps them to be so much happier. It helps us to prevent so many arguments and power struggles with them because they know, they just know what's going to happen. They don't fight against it, usually.
Tip number eight, give your undivided attention. When you have a toddler who is not clearly speaking yet or who wants to play with things with, and you don't want to play with those toys, it's so easy to check out, especially in our day and age with phones and easy access to all kinds of work that we can do or people we can contact. It's really easy to ignore our kids actually and that's super sad to me. But at the same time, I've seen myself do it. And when I do that, I notice that my sons are more agitated. They really crave my attention. They need it. They actually need attention. We have found that meal times need to be a time where we have our undivided attention on the family. So our phones are away, we're not working on anything, we're not calling anyone, we're not talking to anyone except who is at the table with us. And that has been really a good refreshing time building up our family as well as just giving our toddlers that attention that they need. I hope that this advice proves as helpful to you as it has been to our family. To be quite frank, I don't know where we would be today without this advice. And so thank you to everyone who poured this advice into our lives and shared with us. These things make the beliefs and values part of our parenting so much easier to execute, to follow through, to do, because we know that our lives are running more smoothly and our son is actually listening and ready and feels connected to us. Thanks so much for joining me today. I will chat with you again in the next video. In the meantime, check out my other video about babies and toddlers right here. And I will talk with you soon. Ciao.